class and welcome to English Online, where each lesson will explore a variety of texts and stories to deepen our understanding of the diverse and complex ideas about identity, others, and the world. This is your host, Mr. Sommerfeld, and in today's lesson, you'll be introduced to a topic we all love, poetry. Your job is to follow along with the slides presentation. If you have any questions, click the link provided and ask away. And now, without further ado. Poetry. What exactly is poetry? Today, we're going to be talking about rhythm in poetry in order to help us begin to understand what this wonder of language is. Poetry. Words arranged in a rhythmic pattern with regular accents. Think of beats and music. You know how to measure music, so let's teach you how to measure poetry. First, take a listen. This is the forest primeval, the murmuring pine and the hemlocks. So beautiful. Notice how the stressed accent is near the start of each section. Read it out loud for yourself. No, seriously, read it. Now listen again and tell me if this sounds correct. This is the forest primeval, the murmuring pine and the hemlocks. Of course not. It doesn't sound right at all. The emphasis was on the wrong part of the word. I'm sure the intuitive side of your poetic minds picked that out right away. Poetry, see it's a group of words carefully selected for sound, accent, and meaning. This is in order to express imaginatively ideas and emotions. It's not just words selected for sound, accent, or meaning. It's all three of those. Imagine going to a river to look for gold. You'd have to sift through countless rocks and grains of sand in order to find that one piece of gold. With poetry, you need to sift through countless words in order to find the exact word that has the right sound, the right accent, and the right meaning. But how do we do this? Well, to start, each poem has a rhythm called a metric pattern. What does the word metric remind you of? That's right, measurement. So in poetry, the words are grouped together in such a way that they have predictable patterns that can be measured. Now, this might be a good time to mention this, but nowadays, poetry is seen as some sort of abstract nonsense. But in truth, there are a lot of rules to poetry. And yes, you can break all the rules, but in order to break the rules, you first need to know the rules. So back to the main topic. How do you measure a poem? Well, you measure a poem using poetic meter. Notice the example here. There's a little U-shaped symbol on top of each line of poetry. Don't worry, this won't be on the exam, but you still need to know it in order to make your own poetry. The U-shaped symbol represents an unstressed sound. What letter does the word unstressed start with? Correct, the letter U. So that U-shaped symbol means unstressed. Can anyone guess what the slash mark represents? Wow, good work. Yes, it means the sound of that portion of the word is stressed. U-shaped symbol, unstressed. Slash symbol, stressed. Pause the video if you need a second to let that sink in. Let's talk about feet. Metric feet in poetry, that is. Here we see a pattern of an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable. This is called an iambic pattern. Each chunk, one stressed and one unstressed symbol, is called a foot. How many feet do you see in the first line? The stag at eve had drunk his fill. Correct, there are four feet. The stag, one, at eve, two, had drunk, three, his fill, four. Since they follow the pattern of unstressed followed by stressed, we call this iambic feet. Notice how in this slide the pattern is reversed. Now it is a stressed syllable followed by an unstressed syllable. Dead he lay there in the forest. We call this pattern trochaic. 
trochaic. How many trochaic feet are in the first line of the poem here? Once again, you are right. There are four. Everything on this slide is going to be on a test. Just kidding. I do, however, want you to go through this slide so that you know and understand what's going on. Take a look at the fourth line down, dactyl, dactylic. Here we have a stressed syllable followed by an unstressed syllable followed by another unstressed syllable. Seriously, someone once upon a time actually sat down and came up with all this stuff. So we start with iambic at the top there, unstressed, stressed, followed by trochee, trochaic, stressed, unstressed, spondy, spondaic, stressed, stressed. Go ahead and familiarize yourself with the rest of these. They're not going to be on a test, so I don't expect you to know them necessarily, but the better the poet, the more knowledge they're going to have. Um, all right, let's look at some examples of words that fall into these various categories. Let's start with iambic. So we have behold, not behold. We have amuse, not um, amuse. We have arise, awake, return. Noel, depict. Look at how they fall into that unstressed stress pattern. Now go ahead and read each word out loud for yourself in the other one. So trochee, we have happy, hammer, Pittsburgh, nugget. All right, go ahead and pause the video here if you want to go over the rest of them. Uh, but let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so here we have the next part of the equation. Now that we know how to figure out what a sound pattern is in poetry, um, iambic, trochaic, dactylic, etc. We need to also measure how many feet are in each individual line of poetry. It's fairly intuitive. One foot, we call that monometer. Two feet, we call dimeter. Three feet, can you guess? Hmm? Yes, trimeter. Four feet, tetrameter. Okay, maybe that one isn't so intuitive, but can you guess what five feet in a line would be called? Correct. Pentameter. Have you got the rest? Okay. Well, that sums it up for today. I'd like you guys to go head over to Google Classroom and uh, take a look at what today's assignment is. Make sure you're keeping up with each and every one of these assignments because at the end of this unit, you're going to be writing a poem and it's going to be based on all of these little assignments that we're doing. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep learning and stay healthy.